sometimes lawyers want to provide some financial assistance to a client, especially a litigation client who is strapped for cash and the case is taking a long time. The lawyer may be expecting a reward or verdict for the client, but in the meantime, the client can't pay their medical bills or can't pay their rent. That's the subject of ABA Model Rule 1.8E, and that's what we're going to be talking about here. This is one of our conflicts of interest rules uh, under 1.8, and having given that quick introduction, let's dive in. To start with the big picture, Rule 1.8E generally prohibits a lawyer from providing financial assistance, including loans or guarantees of third-party loans, to a client in connection with pending or contemplated litigation. The prohibition here is designed to avoid encouraging clients to pursue litigation that might otherwise not be brought. In other words, throwing money at clients or prospective clients to induce them to bring a case with this particular firm or to stay with the litigation even when it's taking a long time. We are also concerned about giving lawyers too great a financial stake in the litigation. So now let's look at the text of 1.8e itself. Rule 1.8e begins, a lawyer shall not provide financial assistance to a client in connection with pending or contemplated litigation. So that's our overarching rule. You can't um, basically front people money in litigation as a lawyer. A third party litigation finance company might do that, but the lawyer cannot. Now we're going to have three big categorical exceptions. They're bright line rules that could be easy to turn into test questions. 1.8E1 says a lawyer may advance court costs and expenses of the litigation, the repayment of which may be contingent on the outcome of the matter. So this is very similar to a plaintiff's lawyer who charges a contingent fee. A lot of times when they say, if you don't win, you don't pay anything, that means that the firm will essentially eat the court costs and expenses um, if the, uh, the matter is not successful, if the client doesn't prevail. And so that's what we mean by the repayment being contingent on the outcome of the matter. Now, this also means that if the client wins, they'll not only have to pay you your percentage for your attorney's fees, but in theory, out of their share, they would also have to reimburse you for any court costs or expenses that you paid for experts and consultants and so forth um, out of after they win. 1.8E2 says a lawyer representing an indigent client may pay court costs and expenses of litigation on behalf of the client. So if the client is indigent, they don't you could just pay this out of pocket if you want on the idea that they would even if they win they would need the money because they're indigent and shouldn't have to comp you or reimburse you for that the rule itself doesn't define indigent probably in practice it would be safe to assume that if you're that we should use the same rule that would qualify for court appointed counsel But for test purposes, just keep in mind, if it mentions in a question that the client is indigent, then it's okay for the lawyer or law firm to just pay the court filing fees or to pay for medical exams and so forth without um, being repaid in the future or agreeing with the client to be repaid in the future if they win. In 2020, the ABA actually modified or amended Model Rule 1.8E, adding a pretty big exception for lawyers providing assistance to indigent clients. And that's what I'm going to explain here. Uh, Several states had already adopted this rule or something similar to it, but it's one of our newer rules and students should watch for it on the MPRE. 1.8E3 says a lawyer representing an indigent pro bono client. So if you are representing someone and you're not planning on charging even a contingent fee, then you can actually provide modest gifts to the client for food, rent, transportation, medicine, and other basic living expenses. By the way, this is exactly the type of assistance that the general provision was supposed to prevent 
in terms of lawyers offering to put clients up in expensive resorts and um, give them free room and board while the litigation is pending or um, send them on cruises and things like that. Here, we're talking about an indigent client and we're talking about modest amounts to help them pay rent and or to give them bus fare to get to and from your firm or to and from the court, things like that. Now, there's some conditions to this, but 1.8 E3, which is the newest part of the rule, also applies to a lawyer representing an indigent pro client pro bono through a nonprofit legal services or public interest organization. So if you are either a legal aid lawyer or you've agreed to take a case for legal aid and represent one of their clients, um, that would qualify. Or a lawyer who's representing an indigent client pro bono through a law school clinic program or a, some, a state bar pro bono program. Now, here's our caveats. 1.8 E3 little i says, first, the lawyer may not promise or assure or imply the availability of such gifts prior to retention or as an inducement to continue the client-lawyer relationship after retention. In other words, if you're, you're just eager to have the client or take this case because of your interest in it or you, you think it'll be good publicity, you can't promise this up front, we'll help you with your rent or things like that. Or if a client gets discouraged and wants to either drop your firm or switch to someone else, you can't offer inducements to keep them. And then a E3 two, little two says the lawyer may not seek or accept reimbursement from the client, a relative of the client or anyone affiliated with the client. So if you are availing yourself under this provision, you have an indigent client representing them pro bono, and that, let's say you win and you win big. They get a windfall um, from the proceeds. You can't turn around later and say, hey, remember how I gave you rent money uh, while, things, while you were in a rough patch, while we were waiting for the award to come through? Maybe you could pay me back. You're, you're not allowed to have them do that. Or let's say one of their family members is really grateful for what you did uh, in representing them, and maybe they won the lottery or something, and they want to do something nice for you. You cannot seek or accept reimbursement from the client or a relative of the client or a close friend of the client. And then E3, little three, says the lawyer may not publicize or advertise a willingness to provide such gifts to prospective clients. So you can't go around saying, hey, you should sign up with our firm. We'll do your case pro bono and we'll help you with rent money and so forth. Um, in the meantime, they're actually prohibited from doing that. Finally, Rule 1.8E3 has a conclusion that says financial assistance under this rule may be provided even if the representation is uh, eligible for fees under a fee shifting statute. So, some jurisdictions like Texas have loser pays rules for certain types of cases. And you're allowed to do this even if the client is going to end up getting money um, in an award of attorney's fees after the representation. Okay, just a final point about some exam tips to remember for students. Please keep in mind that this rule applies only to litigation clients. So it has no relevance if you're, we're talking about a transactional matter um, of negotiating a, a, a business deal, the sale of a business or real estate or something like that. And if you are representing transactional clients, there is no prohibition on you uh, giving them gifts or financial assistance if you want or if your firm wants. Um, keep in mind that the, this is one of our conflicts of interest rules, and that's the real concern here is that the lawyer's personal financial stake is in the outcome will be, get to be too high and influence the lawyer's judgment. And we're a little worried that lawyers will have a perverse incentive to give clients a perverse incentive to bring maybe frivolous claims or claims that they wouldn't have brought or wouldn't have bothered with and so forth, but the lawyer is basically giving them inducements to do so. And keep in mind for purposes of preparing for the MPRE that we have multiple provisions here, but they are bright line rules. So that could guide your studying to make sure that you know the rules cold 
But if you do, the questions should be easy. That concludes our brief lecture about ABA Model Rule 1.8e, financial assistance to clients. In our next lecture, we will move on through some of the other conflicts of interest rules under 1.8.